All right, good afternoon. I will start off uh, with a read off the statement that we issued a short while ago on Cyprus. In line with the statement issued following the meeting of the Secretary General with the Turkish Cypriot leader, Mr. Mustafa Kinci, and the Greek Cypriot leader, Mr. Nikos Anastasiades, in New York on June 4th, and following consultations with all participants, the conference on Cyprus will reconvene in Geneva on June 28th. The conference will reconvene at the political level under the auspices of the Secretary General with the participation of Mr. Anastasiades and Mr. Akinci, as well as Greece, Turkey, the United Kingdom as guarantor powers and in the presence of the European Union as an observer. And the Secretary General uh, was in Astana, Kazakhstan today where he addressed the Council of Heads of State of the Shanghai Cooperation Council organization. He highlighted the solid foundation of the group's cooperation with the United Nations and made a special plea for it to show leadership and commitment in the efforts to implement the Paris Climate Change Agreement. The Secretary General said that ultimately inclusive and sustainable development is the best form of prevention and of preventing armed conflict and violent extremism. As we pursue that objective, he said, let us pay special attention to youth unemployment, stressing that democratic institutions that uphold the rule of law and that provide peaceful channels for addressing grievances are critical for progress, as, they, as, as are the space for civil society and a free and independent media, he told the leaders. Today, the Secretary General also had bilateral meetings with the President of Kazakhstan, President Nazarbayev, as well as meetings with King Felipe of Spain, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, and the Foreign Minister of India, Mohammad Javad Zarif, as well as the Secretary General of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Rashid Alimov. We put out his remarks to the press, during which he also stressed the importance of the cooperation between the UN and Kazakhstan at the national, regional, and global level. After a visit to the 2017 Expo on Future Energy, currently ongoing in Astana, the Secretary General is now on his way to Uzbekistan. And uh, in Mali, the UN mission reports that three of its peacekeepers were killed in an attack in Kidal yesterday. The UN's camp was first targeted by indirect fire in which five peacekeepers were lightly injured, slightly injured. The mission then deployed three quick reaction forces units around the base and towards the fire point of origin. Immediately after the indirect fire against the mission's camp, unidentified assailants attacked a UN observation post southeast of the base, leaving three peacekeepers dead and three others injured. The UN mission condemns these attacks and calls on the parties in Kidal to help identify those responsible so they can ultimately be brought to justice. The mission reiterates its determination to continue its support to the peace process and to protect the population. We extend our condolences to the families of the fallen peacekeepers, and we wish a speedy recovery to the wounded ones. And from Iraq, the Secretary General Special Representative in that country, Jan Kubish, strongly condemned the suicide bombing in uh, the Musayab district in northern Babel and expressed his condolences to the families of the victims. He said that terrorists continue to disregard the holy month of Ramadan and continue to murder innocent people, showing how cowardly they are. Mr. Kubish added that no matter what the terrorists do, the resolve of the Iraqi people will not wane. And our uh, humanitarian colleagues are alarmed that no UN convoys have moved to besieged and harsh to reach locations in Syria in over two weeks. The last such convoy was on May 22nd. Meanwhile, the UN continues its concern for the safety and well-being of some 4,000 people who have reportedly fled from the uh, Tel Safuk area and surrounded villages along the Iraqi border to Markada town in al Hassad governorate due to ongoing fighting in the area. Also in fighting advances into Raqqa city, we have reports that over 95,000 people have already fled the city. We remind all parties to the fighting of their obligations to protect civilians under international humanitarian law. And the Deputy Secretary General will depart New York for Atlanta to attend the Rotary Presidential Peace Conference on June 10th, 
where she will deliver the keynote address. In attendance will be Rotarians, world business leaders, and senior government officials, as well as civil society organizations. She will then depart uh, later tomorrow for Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, where she will meet with the president and senior management of the Islamic Development Bank. She will also meet with the uh, Sustainable Development Goals Communities of Practice and attend a town hall meeting to deliver a lecture on working with member states of the Islamic De Development Bank to achieve the SDGs. She will be uh, travel back to New York on Monday. And also on travel, the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, will be in the Democratic Republic of the Congo on Monday. During his trip, he will visit Kinshasa, Kananga, Goma, and Beni. Monsieur Lacroix is expected to meet with national authorities, members of the government, as well as political and civil society actors. He will convey the need for all Congolese actors to work in a spirit of collaboration and good faith to establish the special provisions for the speedy and full implementation of the transitional arrangements. Monsieur Lacroix will also meet with the mission staff. And also on the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the High Commission for Human Rights, Zaid Rad Al Hussein, today called on the Human Rights Council to establish an international investigation into the widespread violations and abuses that have occurred in the Kasai Central and Kasai Oriental provinces. Uh, since August 2016, some 1.27 million people from the Kasais have been internally displaced by the violence. The UN Human Rights Office has documented 42 mass graves, although the actual number may even be higher. Reports of summary executions and other killings, including of children, as well as sexual violence, have been documented. In early May, Mr. Zaid had urged the government of the DRC to take the steps to ensure that a credible, transparent investigation be established by June 8th. While the government has sought technical support and advice from the UN, the High Commissioner said its response to date falls short in view of the gravity and widespread nature of the violations given the imp imperative need for justice for the victims. The crimes committed to the, in the Kasais appear to be of such gravity that they must be of concern to the international community as a whole, and in particular to the Human Rights Council, the High Commissioner said. And our colleagues at the IAEA and the Food and Agriculture Organization today launched a project to help countries detect food fraud and contamination. The project will develop handheld devices to test for adulterants, contaminants, and mold in food by using nuclear-based technology regularly used by border police in detection of illicit drugs and explosives. The food fraud is estimated to cost the global food industry between 10 and $15 billion every year. That's, a, that's about 10% of all commercially sold food products. The goal of the project is to reduce this cost by making it available low-cost devices and methods for food authorities to use directly in the streets and markets, particularly in developing countries. If you're interested, go to the IEA website. And I have a senior appointment to announce today. The Secretary General, in consultation with the Secretary General of the UN Conference on Trade and Development, otherwise known as UNCTAD, has decided to appoint Isabelle Durand of Belgium as the Deputy Secretary General of UNCTAD at the Assistant Secretary General level. Uh, she, Ms. Durand will succeed uh, uh, Joachim Reiter of Sweden, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his dedicated service and commitment and contribution to UNCTAD. Ms. Durand brings to the position a wealth of international experience at all senior levels of her interactions with governments, the private sector, and civil society. She is currently a member of the uh, Brussels a Parliament of the excuse me, she's a member of the Parliament of the Brussels Capital Region, and she formerly served as Deputy Prime Minister of Belgium for four years, as well as Vice President of the European Parliament. Her full bio is in my office. And uh, today, uh, 12.30, Damien Cardona will be joined by the PGA, Peter Thompson, and the Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Mr. Wu Wong Bo, on, and the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, Isabella Lovin, and they will brief you on the uh, outcome of the Ocean Conference, which closes today. And at 3.30, there will be a uh, briefing entitled Oceans and Climate, the Way Forward, and that will include Mohamed Shaini, Fisheries and Agricultural Minister of the Maldives, Omar Figueroa, Minister of State and Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries uh, and Environment and Environment Sustainable Development for Belize, and uh, Umich Singebo, Minister of Natural Resources, Environment and Tourism of Palau. Ms. Landry. 
Stefan, on Cyprus, is the Secretary General, will he be going to Geneva for this uh, yes, new Yes, you can expect him to be, uh, I would expect him to be there at the opening. On the 28th, okay. And also the security arrangements that the UN envoy, the document that the UN mm -hmm. envoy is uh, discussing, is that expected to be completed by the 28th? I, I can't say if it will be completed by the 28th, but obviously the, the, that is an agenda, the security issues is an agenda on, on the conferences work. Yep. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, yesterday, Saudi, the UAE, Bahrain, and Egypt put out a statement um, in which they have a list of terror supporters. Uh, there's about, I think there's 59 people and 12 groups. Uh, one of the groups is uh, Qatar Charity, um, and it has partnerships or has worked with UNICEF, UNRWA, um, WFP, I'm wondering if the SG has any reaction to this. Yeah, I mean, we've seen, uh, we've obviously seen the media reports uh, and the reference uh, to this charity, which has worked, uh, which has worked for, with uh, OCHA. I'll come to you, don't worry. As I said, we've seen the, um, the report, we've seen the name of the, of the list. Um, you know, as a matter of principle, the UN is bound only by, its, by the sanctions list put together by UN uh, organs such as the as the Security Council, we're not bound uh, by any other uh, any other lists. OCHA over the years has built strong partnership with these organizations based on shared humanitarian principles, uh, which are strictly non-political. For example, the Qatari charity implements projects included in the UN coordinated humanitarian response plans in Yemen, in Syria, and in Iraq, and where they also participate in the common humanitarian coordination structure. OCHA does not receive any funding from either of these organizations or provide funding to them. Did um, any of these four countries or all of them together um, send any correspondence to the Secretariat in regards to this list? I'm not aware as of this morning of any, uh, any letter having been received specifically uh, on this. Mr. Lee. About this uh, report in South Sudan of uh, renewed uh, attacks, the rebels say that they killed 14, so people have a higher number. Since there's a mission there, what's the mission? It's a calculation of how many people killed and who I, did it. I did not receive an update from the mission today on, on the latest. And what about on, on this issue of blocking uh, foreign journals from reporting? We're, we're looking into it. Of... We're, we're looking into it, obviously. But I think, uh, as I said yesterday, uh, we stand firmly uh, for the rights of journalists uh, to report, uh, and especially in a crisis such as South Sudan and where the UN has such large, large presence. Masoud and Ed Abdahamid. Thank you, uh, Stefan. Now that the uh, President of uh, Turkey, Mr. Erdogan, has said that he will be sending Turkish troops to Qatar and that the uh, situation over there is going bad to worse. Is the Secretary General going to offer any of his good offices to these countries to what he could back off? Because it, it's, uh, it, play, and it will become a powder keg in the Middle East. No, we're, we're very aware of, uh, of the tensions ongoing in the in the Gulf. We know there are a number of regional initiatives that are going on, diplomatic regional initiatives. Um, we hope those succeed. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's important that all can do what they can to sustain and promote uh, regional unity. Uh, the Secretary General has discussed uh, regional developments in a number of his bilaterals with, um, with uh, people he's, he's seen in, uh, in Astana. Abdelhamid. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Um, last night there was a meeting at the, in the Security Council about ICC in which Bin Souda submitted her 25th report on Darfur. Mm -hmm. A few African ambassadors attack, attacked ICC strongly, including the Egyptian ambassador mm -hmm. who called on the ICC to stop pursuing the uh, the arrest of uh, President Omar al-Bashir. The <clears throat> Sudanese ambassador asked a good question about the relation between sec the Secretariat and the ICC, and he called on, on the Secretariat to distance itself from ICC because it's giving the impression that it's part of the UN system. My question, is the ICC part of the UN system? And what is the U uh, Secretary General's position vis-a-vis -vis this call to distance 
itself uh, from I think the, ICC. the 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 statute of the ICC as as laid out in the Rome uh, statute are very clear uh, the prosecutor was there at the um, at the invitation of the Security Council it's not something that involves the Secretariat the ICC is independent uh, from uh, from the Secretary General we do believe that uh, the International Criminal Court is a critical part of uh, ensuring that uh, accountability is seen through in, uh, in war crimes, in crimes against uh, humanity. It is an important part of the international justice system. Yeah, in the back then, Carol. Thank you. Uh, Sipani mentioned the Secretary General met uh, the Pakistani Prime Minister, mm -hmm. and I think I heard you said the Indian Foreign Secretary, or was it the Pakistani? No, I said the Pakistani of uh, Nawaz Sharif. I did not mention uh, the Indian. Not the Indian. Okay. okay. Carol, if you have a quick follow-up, and then sorry. We'll Sifan, just getting back to Syria, what you mentioned at the top there, the two weeks without deliveries. Um, so I imagine some of these besieged areas are in the de-escalation zones, and uh, what does this tell you about the... Uh, the agreement on, on setting Well, you know, the de-escalation zone, our understanding is that there were talks in Moscow uh, between uh, Mr. Dimistora and uh, Russian Foreign Minister, uh, I think uh, today or yesterday, uh, just on, on, these, uh, on these zones. Um, we would like to see a, a situation evolve in Syria as quickly as possible where humanitarian access is continues uh, is where the conditions for unfettered uh, humanitarian access is is created. I mean, we have seen you know a number of weeks since we've had to manage deliveries. There are places that have not seen deliveries in months. Um, it's critical that our convoys be allowed through without uh, being stopped at every checkpoint and without certain items uh, being taken out. Joe and then Nizar. <coughs> Go ahead, Joe, and then you, sir. Yeah, um, I just want to go back to that Qatar um, uh, charity or charities. Uh, first of all, you said the UN is only bound in terms of not dealing <coughs> with entities that are specifically listed in, I guess, Security Council mm -hmm. or other uh, UN-based um, uh, sanctions. Uh, um, but does that mean that if information comes to the Secretariat's attention, that raises concerns about the bona fides of, of an entity, an NGO. Of course. I mean, of course. I mean, there, I mean there what, is, what kind of due diligence? There, there is, would there, be is com, there is common sense, uh, hopefully, in everything we do. Well, I would hope, but obviously, if if information is is shared about particular individuals, a particular uh, or a particular uh, entities. Uh, that raised concern, we would take a look at that. I well, mean, is, that being, done, so, is so, that being done in, in this particular We have case? not received, I'm not aware that we have received any communication on, on this except, well, not the, official. Ex, except, for, except for media reports. Well, not but, official. But what, I, what I was also uh, hopefully saying uh, clearly is that we have worked, uh, OCHA has worked with these, uh, with these entities and talked to the, the Qatar uh, charity as a uh, as a partner, but we did not um, we do not provide funding for them, and we do not receive funding for but, them. But can you just elaborate what that means to say uh, the UN has worked as a partner? I understand there's no direct dollar or no monetary funding going back and forth, but what does that mean? That uh, means to be a partner? In, in, in very in very broad terms, that means when the UN has a humanitarian plan, uh, it works with. NGOs, local, regional NGOs, in ensuring that the aid is coordinated. I mean, the, the C and OCHA stands for coordination, and that's, uh, that's what it means. Nizar. Yeah, uh, on Hajj, uh, part of the crackdown on the Qatari nationals in Saudi Arabia, many pilgrims to Mecca were forced to leave Mecca, and they were at short notice uh, had to leave the whole, uh, many cities. Also, their cars were vandalized. There were attacks on them systematically from civilians, uh, and the police did not help these people. Uh, what is the right I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen those reports. I can look into. Oh, well, I have another question yes. so, on Rukka. I would hope you would. I don't know why you, you avert these, although there are pictures no, no. and videos. No, I haven't. Uh, but I haven't. I will seen, send I you seen copies reports, of them. Yeah. Uh, on Raqqa, there are new reports showing that white phosphorus again is used in Raqqa against civilians and uh, densely populated areas. 
the, you mentioned that some uh, convoys did not go through to Hasaka and other regions. So how about this? Uh, what kind of humanitarian aid is being sent to the civilians and uh, coming out from Riqqa itself? Uh, we are, uh, through, through the UN and its partners, we, have, uh, we are delivering aid, whether it's food, non-food items, to those people who are able to get out of, uh, able to get out of Raqqa. As, as for the use of white phosphorus in Mosul and the Raqqa? I mean, we've seen, we've seen those reports. Obviously, uh, if this turned out to be true, it would be deeply troubling, to say the least. Uh, and who's, who's, who's going to yes. investigate if they are true or not? Uh, we'll have to see at this point. I have nothing more to share with Thank you. you. Uh, Stefan, do you have a readout of the talks between the Pakistani Prime Minister and Secretary General? Uh, they, in his bilaterals, the Secretary General discussed uh, devel development issues, uh, including economic development, environmental sustainability, and regional issues. And regional issues. Does that include uh, Kashmir I, I will also? leave it at regional issues. Okay. Uh, the region is the region. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Steph. Turning to an issue that's sort of less front page, I was just wondering what the um, status of perhaps political talks or move, any movement uh, regarding eastern Ukraine and also any assessments of humanitarian conditions. Uh, I can get you a humanitarian update uh, on Monday on, uh, on Ukraine. The, the human rights monitoring uh, continues. I think they issued a report uh, not that long ago, so you could refer to that. Uh, but nothing on on the political developments that we're able to share. As you know, there's the the Minsk, the, the Normandy group, the Minsk groups, but those are not things that we are directly involved in. Matthew, and then up to Hamid. Sure. I want to ask about Morocco, and then something about the Secretary General on 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 this issue of RIF, which I guess I want to ask you now. There's the use of tear gas uh, uh, on protesters, and a number, at least two journalists, have been arrested and taken to Casablanca for questioning, and the charges are unclear. They're from Awar TV and Rift Press, and I know that three days ago you said, you know, you'd hope to get something. Is what does DPA think about this? Or, or I, I, is, I, I, you know, obviously as a matter of principle, we believe wherever uh, that people have a right to demonstrate peacefully. Uh, but more specifically, I have nothing to share with you. And, uh, your next question. Okay, the next question is: the Secretary General on, the, on this uh, Central Asian trip is going, among other places, to Turkmenistan. As mm -hmm. you may have seen, Amnesty International and other groups have put out a. a, a Pretty damning report that eight, that uh, 18 men have been condemned to 12 to 25 years in prison after a trial that took two years. It just happened. The mm -hmm. press release stated yesterday. So my question is two questions. One is the Secretary General going to int intend to raise this type of pretty extreme human rights issue during his trip to Central Asia, in particular in, in Turkmenistan? And two, I see that he leaves there the 13th and he's back here the 15th. Is he? Is there some secret diplomacy taking place or? What's, what's his uh, itinerary in terms of coming if it's back? it's secret, I have no, I'm not All aware right. of it. All right, is he stopping in Portugal? Uh, Just a question. Is he stopping in Portugal? I'm not aware if he's stopping in Portugal, but wherever he is, we're always happy to say where he is on the day where he is. On the day of. Um, okay. You would ask something else. I'd ask if he's going to raise human oh, rights. Oh, yes, I mean, obviously, I mean, I think he, he's already mentioned uh, human rights in, in a regional setting uh, mm -hmm. at the CSO session. He will mention that, among other things, as he continues his travels. What about he, a trial that just took place and people were I, I, to 25 I, I, I don't have any specific hours. guidance on that, uh, on that specific event. Abdul Hamid. Yes, Steph. Uh, <clears throat> there, there was a meeting on Tuesday between the uh, Council on Settlement and the Israeli Ministry of Housing, and they submitted the plans, which is now in the hands of the uh, Interior Committee at the Knesset, to establish 67,000 units, 67,000, to accommodate 340,000 settlers in the West Bank, as they said, to solve the uh, crisis of high prices in Israel. So with that coming uh, an alarming uh, rate, what is the UN doing to prevent such a massive I think we, uh, we were, project uh, which will leave nothing we're, we're, to what we're, we call We're aware of, uh, of the plan and, it's, and as it's moving. Obviously, uh, I think we've expressed in the past and continue to express our concern. Uh, I think especially at this uh, plan for this large number of housing, uh, of housing units. I think we stand against any and all 
uh, unilateral action that threaten peace and undermine the two-state solution. As the Secretary General has consistently stressed, there is no plan B for Israelis and Palestinians to live together in peace and security. Settlement activities are illegal under international law and present an obstacle to peace. Thank you. I'll get our guests.